Choip, choip, choip. Choip, choip, choip. Yeah, no, totally. These are Jericals and not just Wookiees who wear clothes. Welcome to Avaria, the wild, mostly unsettled continent on a planet that used to be spacefaring, but lost that ability along with a lot of their other technology a long time ago. It's a pretty rough place with ferocious wildlife and ferocious people who vie for control over as much as they can, who are prone to corruption and fulfilling their goals using violence. Masses of people are endangered servants, they're trapped in debt, plus here it's surprisingly easy to break the law and work outside of it. The main religion of the area is based off of some mysterious sea-dwelling deity with tentacles. Nice world building and there's more where that came from. You play as one of three grifters who do a lot of odd jobs on the way to fulfilling their goals, and those require either a silver tongue using your negotiation deck, or violence using your combat deck. I prefer a mix of both, stab and gab, hash and slash, shoot and toot, and missions can be selected based on your preference. Choosing your approach with options such as bribery being available. It's your choice, but combat probably is more important, because even the fastest talking scoundrel can convince a monster not to eat them. But negotiation definitely has its place, because it can ensure certain beneficial outcomes, such as weakening an enemy before you fight them. Plus, some approaches can rob people the wrong way. Sure I hit, stabbed and shot you a few times. Does that really mean we can't be friends? I mean, you'd think in a place as rough and tumble as Avaria, they'd understand this sort of thing is just business. But no, sometimes you can make people dislike you or even hate you. And each character is a social bane that acts as a penalty for them hating you. Seemingly everyone can make your life difficult. But they all also have a social boon for when they love you. So making friends does pay off. And killing people can make you other enemies. Unless you're in an isolated spot. In that case, it can be quite an efficient way of getting rid of a problem. And sometimes it has larger story implications. So all these things are worth considering in your decision making. Build bridges or burn them. And then we move on to the actual negotiation and combat gameplay. It's a roguelike deck building game. And ultimately is very similar to Slave Aspire. But hey, Griftlands is great and it does its own good things. Plus, let's face it, by this point, Slave Aspire has created a new genre. You earn opportunities to choose cards and improve your deck. And mainly they relate to applying defensive points or dealing attack damage. It's turn-based and usually you can see what your enemy is going to do next, what their target is and how much damage will be done. Each turn your action points get refilled and you spend them by playing cards. Are you going to mitigate damage or deal it? Use a card with a special ability or an item card. Choose cards according to your strategy. Discard cards. Expend them from the rest of the fight or negotiation. You'll apply buffs. You'll get a feel for it. For instance, don't pick a card as a reward that gets activated if you discard a card if you have no cards that let you discard cards when you play them. Or don't pick cards that employ statuses that your deck can't apply yet. And each character has different cards and different playstyles, as well as different effects. So different, in fact, that at first it can be quite jarring to switch characters. Sal is kind of a straightforward warrior type, whereas Rook has a coin flip mechanic during negotiations, and Smith uses empty bottles during fights like the rogue he is. At the very least, he seems to be a talented mixologist, making all these during a battle situation. Win the interaction and earn shills, which is the game's currency, as well as cards and experience depending on how many times you played the card. Once you've gained enough experience for that card, you get to upgrade it. And usually you'll be given a choice as to how you want to upgrade it. Prison movies never go into how many options there are when it comes to shivs, do they? Depending on the card, it will offer you two options from many, and also you can be rewarded with a graft, which presumably melds with your body in some potentially painful way. If that only seems like a short headache, and these can give run-changing benefits. And finally you can be rewarded with Metal, the game's roguelike currency, to purchase permanent upgrades for the character, or prestige points to buy new flourishes. Special cards that can be played once you've dealt or mitigated enough damage, yielding powerful effects. And you can unlock perk points to purchase perks that can be used by any character, 
And when each run ends, you earn points based off your achievements towards unlocking new card packs. So the character becomes stronger with more cards to choose from, stat increases, flourishes, and as usual you've earned more knowledge and experience, now go try again. And this time around you can make different choices, maybe pick a different main mission path, and also have other smaller missions to select from. Or sometimes the same mission but involving a different NPC, but with the same dialogue. Or maybe who you fight will be different. Each character has a different story and operates in a different city. Sometimes they have access to different NPCs and different music, which is good. A track for negotiation, a track for combat, plus some other musical cues. And it sometimes changes to coalesce with what's happening. For instance, maybe the tempo will change when someone's health gets low. A lot of times the music is something very rhythmic, something that loops very easily, and noticeably until the appropriate action has been met. Smith's negotiation music is my personal favorite. I suppose the only real criticism you can levy at the music is that the reactive nature of it can sometimes not only make it noticeable how easy it is to loop, but also can make it transition a bit clumsily. That's not a big problem, you may just hear or notice it if you win a fight or negotiation, just as the music starts to loop. Story-wise the game is good. As hinted at earlier, some of the less significant interactions are interchangeable between NPCs, and sometimes these missions have very little bearing on the story. But they do tend to have good, funny and short dialogue. The elements of the main missions are a bit more solid when it comes to how choices interact with one another, but they also involve smaller missions with little bearing. You need some help, you need to do someone a favor, doesn't really matter which favor, but still those interactions will have good dialogue. And while emotions are lacking therein overtly, there are subtleties and connections occur. Sal is your bog standard revenge seeker, but their sort of family connection to Fsh is lovely. Another character Rook can work for whoever you choose. But I won't spoil it for you, there's at least a nice little thing to ponder when you consider how easy it is to choose either main employer. And lastly, Smith is a lovable brutish oof, with moments of brilliance and a love-hate relationship with his family. At first these stories seem kind of light, but they creep on you the more you play. Plus it has great world building. It's a very caustic world, haggard people. Some try to help others, some try to exploit others. An already dangerous place made worse by turbulent times. Visually, the game is great. Cly Entertainment's signature hand-drawn cartoony style. Kind of angular details on characters. But this time around, it's more straight-laced. Less goofy and spooky than Oxygen Not Included or Don't Starve. I suppose it's closer to Mark of the Ninja. A more serious but still nice looking thing. But I suppose the Kradeshi headstalks are funny. The backgrounds are nice too. If the maps can make it difficult to figure out how these places look at ground level. As they are quite zoomed out. Once again not a big problem. It just means your imagination is doing more of the work. Plus the pearl on the foam is better in that regard. Apart from the campaigns you can also unlock brawl mode. Which is essentially deck building arcade mode. With randomized missions to pick from. It is fun and gives a more drop in and out method of playing the game. And if you're into grinding, you can unlock higher prestige modes to make things harder. That contribute more points to unlocking new card packs. It took me 44 hours to finally have a successful Sal run, almost complete the Sal brawl, get two successful Rook runs, and win a Smith run. Some failed run attempts included throughout. And that's a conservative estimate. Due to an internet connection error, that just means the value for money you're gonna see just now is perhaps even better. And speaking of, the game is kind of cheap on Steam. 130 Rand full price, 87 Rand 10 cents on sale. Don't worry, it's still early days, the game is still fairly new actually. But even at that price, with the conservative hour total, that's 1 Rand 98 per hour of gameplay. Which is quite nice. And I'm fairly certain a better sale will come along someday. But to download, it kind of has a big download size, as it takes up 5.13 gigabytes on the hard drive. But it does work on the Warhorse, however, with fair performance. 
At worst you will experience a frame rate drop, but I felt it was quite playable. During the test I played it for a fair stint, and still had fun. So something very cool, and quite new that works on the Warhorse. Also, the game is stereotypically kid-friendly. Some people can be rather cutthroat, but when you kill someone you don't see the blood. But I'd say some kids can handle the game. With its very mild drug use, endangered servitude, union slash revolution squashing, and the questionable element, if you want to make friends quickly in this game, and with many people, then you're going to have to drink dangerous amounts of alcohol. The game has great visuals, a serious and more straight-laced take on Cly's cartoony style. It has cool aliens and Hagger Devarians. Good backgrounds too. If the zoomed out match can make it difficult to envision how a lot of parts of these cities look. The game has good music, very rhythmic and easy to loop and adapt to what's currently happening. And because of that you may hear an awkward transition now and then. But other than that it really fits. It's kind of moody and dark. Sci-fi tension rhythms. Sometimes emphasizes the weird world. The game has funny dialogue. The game's characters are quite quippy. And Smith is oafish in a lovely way. In fact most characters are quite blunt and shrug a lot. The game has great and engrossing card and deck building gameplay. There are a lot of strategies you can employ, and sometimes your strategy is molded by the cards you're rewarded with. And thus you won't be ignoring as many cards, hopefully. Some cards are rather specific, and you may avoid them most times. It can be great fun upgrading cards, and selecting cards to build a deck that coalesces with your strategy. Increasing the probability of your victory, in spite of you having to draw cards. And it's great when you set up a situation where you just launch a volley of damage at someone. Plus the game has plenty of choices too, but arguably you won't be playing for a long enough period of time to make full use out of the roguelike elements. You probably won't spend much metal before you reach a point in the game where you feel like you've seen most of what you need to see. Won't unlock all the flourishes either, at the very least during the campaign. You can earn metal in brawl mode, but that will probably be as part of playing it as an in-between game. After you completed the campaign, unless you like to grind, then the story mode will do. The game is great world building, it's a caustic world, quite grim, and all three characters play differently. In terms of available strategies, cards, the map you play on, available missions, mechanics and main story. And on the maybe side, sometimes the main story can be a bit functional, in that you do favors for people in order to get their help, to get you closer to achieving the character's goal. A lot of the favors you do have low bearing on the situation, but it does have some nice subtleties that develop to make up for the overt lack of emotion. As I said, the variants are quite indifferent, and also there are only short bursts of voiceover in a made-up language for emphasis. Kupelsan. And thus you need to read a lot, but the dialogue is usually in short bursts though. Come on, play it! In this game you get to see Scorpion being bashful. Choip, choip, choip. Choip, choip, choip. 